We're talking about a great Indian legend called Kishore Parekh. Way back in the 1960s, at a time when Indian photojournalism was literally handshake pictures, uh, here comes a pleasantly pugnacious, stocky man armed with a degree in uh, filmmaking and documentary photography and uh, with an extreme passion for the kind of photography that probably was not too seen in this part of the world except on a very academic level and comes in completely changes the face of Indian photojournalism comes in uh, armed with a 35mm camera at the same time when probably Bresson or Gene Smith or Margaret Pook White was or maybe a little after that but you know armed with that kind of academic knowledge brought in that that contemporary aesthetic into Indian photojournalism you know at a time when people were using Linoff cameras Roliflexes he kind of brought in the sense of immediacy uh, also fought a lot to give the photographer a certain stature if you may because the photographer was always the guy who came and did that one picture and okay you know you use it stamp size in in print and he, he gave the photographer a status uh, that was hitherto never seen in Indian photography. So full page photo essays, eight column pictures, the credit line that people take for granted today was one of his crusades. He was a huge part of India's photojournalism legacy and things that photographers today take for granted were initiated uh, by him. He never saw a job lesser than uh, being the chief photographer. So his, his one and only big job in India when this revolution happened was revolution in photography was in 61 to 67 in one of India's largest paper, the Hindustan Times. So that is uh, the turning point of Indian photojournalism. His swan song at his highest point of his life was his uh, work from the war of uh, India-Pakistan which ultimately led to the liberation and the birth of a nation called Bangladesh. That was my father's most, uh, you can say, his shining hour, his, his highest point, his frame legacy would be a word because it still exists. As a son I still have these negatives and I've taken it upon myself this time and in this show, particularly in India after 30 years, to show uh, what is still considered iconic an iconic piece of Indian photojournalism so in uh, 1967 uh, uh, was when my father you know went on to do more of magazine journalism in Southeast Asia so we used to live in Hong Kong and having really documented the history of India when Nehru was around and Shastri was around in the 60s I think somewhere uh, you know, doing the slightly softer magazine journalism may have been troubling him because he had photographed the earlier wars in India. And so when this war broke out and there was an eminent lead up to India getting involved in, in the emancipation of and the liberation of Bangladesh, uh, he used to sit and paint on Sundays at the beach and he said, you know, here my country is burning and what am I doing? I'm just sitting and painting. I got to be there. He just landed up here in India not wanting to miss the opportunity to document something that mattered to him, yeah? And he was a very emotional guy. My country's burning, I got to be there. So he goes, lands up here and just goes as close as he can to the border. He had a friend in Calcutta. He said, you know, just drive me to the border. And it was like a four or five hour drive from Calcutta. And he, on the way, we had two and a half million refugees that had come into India. So he started doing these refugee pictures right there. And at that point of time, he broke an army cordon, run, ran towards a helicopter that was taking an official press troop. And he, and he, he just went to the helicopter uh, and there was this army major who was the official carrier of the press troop and uh, just said, you know, shoot me or take me, I'm going. It was supposedly supposed to be recording or showing, depicting reality or what's the very definition of photojournalism. But I think he did it with a, with a very astute visual configuration, which was special. It wasn't just a document, but it was a very sharp, sharp photographer also bringing in his, his own aesthetic into it, you know, so that the aesthetic was always part of the narrative, which was what made it into a great melange. I don't know whether I'm equipped to an analyze them because maybe I'm emotionally involved with these, these what are part of his iconic legacy. 
people say his his is a more neutral viewpoint. He's, his pictures are more about what happened and more about the people that suffered. They are apolitical is what people who've been in the Bangladesh war say that, you know, we find his pictures most straight and a little like what he was. This is what he was. He, he never, I don't think he took sides unless he knew the, that the person is doing some wrong. And it's not necessarily a, a, a viewpoint which is that, okay, this is the way I want to show something, but what, this is what I saw. And his closest friend, who's not a photographer, he said, you know, just before going and after he came back, he said, I said, I just did not think about me being any big shit photographer. I just documented what I saw wherever I could get in. And so if this is just what a document is, my God. And you know, if you see, there's a line there, which, which I picked up from his thesis, you know, live, love, experience. And I go on to say, live, love, experience. That how, that's how he lived. And that's how he died too. Died very young at 51. But I think at, by the age of 51, he had probably experienced and not only a lot of love professionally, as well as from the people that came into his life, but also gave so much.